So our speaker today is a very lovely young lady. Her favorite scripture is Proverbs 24 verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. She also likes gospel music and media production, which she's very good at. She is also the communication director. So I think we all know that our speaker today is none other than Sister Rochelle Thomas. I pray and hope that as she speaks to our hearts today, that we'll focus on God and receive the message that she's bringing us today. We'll have our meditation song now. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. It's good for us to be here. I'm just taking a second to set up my screen here so that I can see you and see myself. It's 2021, yo. And here's the interesting thing about it. We have come full 360, full 360. Thank you, Sister Alia, for that introduction. It's always interesting to hear what people think about you. It's, it's always interesting. And gracefully broken. So last year, this time, we were trying to figure out how to do our youth week of prayer. I remember last year vividly because round about this date was the first day that we didn't have church. Yeah, we didn't have church. And it, I remember it was Global Youth Day. And we were supposed to have started our youth week of prayer and we were on lockdown. And it didn't happen. 
I don't remember it happening. And I think that was around about the same time that EJC Virtual Church had started. Yes, so we are full 360, but this year we have adjusted to our new normal and we are able to launch our youth week of prayer. And that is exactly what we will be doing um, today under the theme, I will go. Now we are a worldwide church. And so if it is that you have been receiving some suggestions from various churches around the world in your YouTube or Facebook um, or on Google, even if you are just browsing, don't be alarmed, we are a worldwide church and some of these same messages are being preached right across the world, no matter the languages these messages are being presented, but Gordon Town youth always know how to put a little twist on things. And so this week we are going, our young people have something up their sleeve. So you might want to stick around on Gordon Town's platform to find out what that will be. Speaking of which, this is a perfect segue. You know, I have to do this. And I'm just gonna ask the person presenting if they could bring up our social media platforms right now. And if you're watching live on YouTube, welcome. We are happy that you're here. If you're watching this on the replay on Facebook, welcome as well. Please ensure, yes, I can't help to say it, ensure you subscribe. I think the link is that side, <laughs> that red button that says subscribe. And beside it, there's a little bell. So you're gonna click on that and some options are gonna come up and I want you to select all because every time we go live, we'd like you to be a part of our worship service. So that is announcement number one. Now, I would like to officially launch our podcast, which is titled Noonday Meditation Oasis of Hope. This is a five minute meditation that is presented by the youth of the Gordon Town SDA Church and is released each day at 12 noon. And I want to use this platform to officially express my thanks to Sister Amali Thomas, who has been team lead on this project. We already have some episodes up. And so all you need to do, you can either download the app Anchor FM or if it is that you are on Spotify, yes, we're on Spotify. We're going places and Spotify is now available in Jamaica. Woo! So go ahead and follow our podcast, Anchor FM forward slash Oasis of Hope. So we're on six platforms. So that's Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Ray and Radio Public. All right. So go ahead. It's all original content and it's a blessing to you. Now let's get into this message. The writer Stephen R. Covey, in his well-known book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, relates an experience that he lived in the New York subway. And might I say that these messages are written for us and we come together and we sometimes we place our own twist on them. All right. But the main content is written for us. Covey tells us that on that day, people were sitting calmly, some were reading newspaper, others were lost in their thoughts or simply resting their eyes and had them closed. Basically, the atmosphere was peaceful and tranquil. Suddenly, a man and his children entered the train. The children were so boisterous and disobedient that the environment changed immediately. The father of the children remained with his eyes closed, ignoring the scene completely. The children jumped from here to there, 
and screaming at their whim, throwing objects, even snatching the newspapers from the people. And the situation was really just annoying. But the father didn't do anything. Kovi could not believe what he was seeing. He could do this. How could this man allow his children to behave in, in such a way? So he stood up from his seat and he addressed the father of the youngster saying, Sir, your children are irritating many people. Can't you control them? It was at that moment that the man opened his eyes and he said in a soft tone, Oh, you are right. I guess I will have to do something. We went to the hospital. Their mother died about an hour ago. I don't know what to think. I guess they don't know how to react either. Wow. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Of mercy. After that revelation, Kovi wrote, suddenly I saw things in a different way. And since I saw it in a different way, I thought in a different way. I felt a different way. I behaved in a different way. And my irritation faded. Now, this is a very interesting story. It shows that when our vision about something changes, our thoughts, our feelings, and above all, our behavior changes as well. Our topic for today is, Lord, renew me and I will go. Lord, renew me and I will go. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we go into your words right now. We thank you, dear Father, that you have allowed us this opportunity. Not many people are allowed this opportunity. Many persons are not are so depressed, dear Father. They don't even want to see any devices. They don't want to hear about church. They're going through so much right now that it's a lot to deal with. Probably they don't even have devices. So like, I'm asking in the midst right now that you may just surround your people. Father, for those who are watching, I ask that you bless them, open their minds, that they may receive the word. Lord, I ask you to place me behind the cross. Let not Russia be seen, but your, your word, Lord, you be glorified, you be magnified, you be at the forefront. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, the Bible presents the story of a man who was changed completely. When he renewed his vision of God, he was that's when he was changed. And I'm referring to the prophet Isaiah. According to the story, this prophet had a special vision about God. However, before we analyze the vision that changed the life of Isaiah, allow me to speak to you a little bit about his book. You see, the book of Isaiah is one of the most interesting books of all the Bible. Some say it's even a miniature Bible. This book has 66 chapters, just like the Bible has 66 books. It has two great divisions, namely, first Isaiah, and Deutero Isaiah. Does that sound familiar to anybody? In addition to that, the two divisions are split. In the first Isaiah, there are 39 books. And in Deutero Isaiah, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, 
just like the New Testament, there are 27 chapters. But do you know what is the most interesting thing about the book of Isaiah? It's a book about Jesus. That is why Isaiah is called the Messianic prophet. Isaiah tells us everything about Jesus. It tells us about his birth. It tells us about his family. It tells us about his anointing. It tells us about his character. It tells us about the simplicity of his life. It tells us about his meekness. It tells us about his death. It tells us about his resurrection. We're talking about the book of Isaiah. When you read the book of Isaiah, you will find that the people of Jesus, you will find the people of Jesus in each one of his pages. But do you know something? When Isaiah wrote his book, things weren't going well among God's people. There were all sorts of problems. The people had moved away from God and consequently they were suffering badly. The prophet Isaiah felt very sad about the condition of God's people. So therefore, one day he decided to go to the temple and to speak to God and make the decision of presenting each one of the problems his people were going through. There in the temple, Isaiah had a vision of God. That vision completely changed his thoughts. It changed his feelings, but above all, it changed his behavior. What did God reveal in the temple? Let us read together Isaiah chapter, chapter 6, and we're going from verses 1 to 4. And it reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Now, God revealed himself to Isaiah. The prophet could contemplate God sitting on his throne, surrounded by angels, filled with the radiant glory, and who sang without rest, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. All the earth is filled with your glory. But what happened in the life of Isaiah when he had this wonderful vision of God? Let me leave the prophet himself to tell you what he experienced. We're going to read now verses 6 to 8. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, when he had taken with the tongues, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. When the prophet Isaiah had a vision of God, the first thing that he experienced was the greatness of his sin. What did I say? The greatness of his sin. Now, somebody placed in the chat right now, greatness of my sin. I want you to think about that. 
If you read in chapter 5 from verses 8 to 30, you will find that the prophet Isaiah preaches against the sin of his people. But when he had the vision of God, he doesn't point to other people's sins. Instead, he looked at his own sin. He looked at his filthy lips and his life, which was full of sin. Notice he said the greatness of his sin. And if we place, instead of using that pronoun, let's use the my instead. He looked at the greatness. Isaiah, I am looking at the greatness of my sin. Now, the second thing that Isaiah experienced, and I want you to note that word experienced, after having the vision of God, was the depth. The depth, oops, the depth of the divine forgiveness. No, again, place that in the chat. The depth of divine forgiveness. Isaiah was not left in the desperation of his sin. Instead, he was granted divine forgiveness. His lips were touched and the angel told him, your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Do I hear somebody saying amen to that? Because first Isaiah started out having this great sin and he recognized that his sin is so great, but then he experienced the depth of forgiveness. Now, the last thing that Isaiah experienced was he responded with courage to the divine call. He what? Responded with courage to the divine call. So I want you to note those three. Number one, Isaiah experienced the greatness of his sin. Number two, Isaiah experienced the depth of divine forgiveness. And number three, Isaiah responded with courage to the divine call. Isaiah heard the voice of God that said, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then without an excuse, his response to God was, here I am, send me. The vision that Isaiah had of God changed him completely. It transformed his thoughts. It transformed his feelings. And above all, it transformed his behavior. The life of Isaiah was never the same again. His life became centered. And it was centered completely around God and God sir and his service to God. Isaiah served the Lord for many years and he was even willing to give his life as a sacrifice for the cause of God. Being an elder, a young prophet asked him, Master, why do you continue working relentlessly for the Lord? Isaiah responded, because one day I saw the Lord and my life changed completely. The story of the prophet and his encounter with God teaches us that when we have a vision of God in our lives, we will never be the same person again. Our thoughts will change. Our feelings will change. And above all, our behavior will change. We'll never become static. We'll never become what? Static. Faced with the call of the Lord, we will always become available to respond. Here I am. Send me. Now the writer says, for a long time, I asked myself, why some believers are so active in the cause of the Lord, while others seem indifferent? And I discovered the response to that question was through a simple allegory. The writer says, According to the astronomers, the planets that move more rapidly are those that are closer to the sun. Stay with me. I won't keep you long, I promise. Mercury goes around the sun in only 80 earthly days. However, Jupiter 
in order to completely lap around the sun lasts no more or less than 12 years. Hmm. What is the difference? Mercury is a planet that is closest to the sun. As a result, it moves more rapidly. Mercy. I realized you didn't catch that analogy. You didn't quite catch it. So let me bring it where you can catch it. And yes, you guessed it right. I am going to use a technology parable. All right. So here goes. I am going to be showing you a picture. Here is that picture. No. On your screen, you are seeing a picture with, uh, of a landscape with what seems to be trees. Um, the trees are dry, the leaves have fallen off. It could be that it's the beginning of fall or it is the beginning of spring. If you look through the lens closely, you will see that it is focused on a little house somewhere around here. Somewhere right here. Now, if you don't see that house, it's 2021, you're probably stuck with 2020 vision. Yes, I did say that. And we, later when you come yeah. offline, you might probably catch that, but that's okay. 2020 is good. I ask you today, do you want a renewed vision? If it is that you're, you want a renewed vision, let's just put that in the chat real quick. Renewed vision, that's what we are asking for. Renewed vision. Now, you see, sometimes we are focused on all the things around us, but it's time to blur out those things and zoom into the things that matter. What matters is our relationship with Christ. You don't get it? Okay, let me say it again. Let, we are looking at this picture. Yes, we see a hand. We see a, a lens being held by the hand, but don't really pay attention to the hand. It's just that the lens cannot be held up by itself. And I'm just thinking about that. I didn't think about it earlier, but that could be God's hand guiding where we look. But moving right along, we're looking at the picture. We're seeing some dead trees. We're not seeing it blossoming at all. We are wondering what is going on with our lives with Christ. But if it is that we are looking at all those things where we, we are not seeing that God is interested in renewing our vision and focusing on, on that one specific thing that he has, he has for us to do. We're looking at how much how many dead matter is in our lives. We're looking at the things that didn't work out. We're thinking about the time when, oh, I was supposed to do this at church. And every time they asked me to do something at church, I back away or I don't do it how I was supposed to do it. And it made me nervous. We're not looking at that right now. We're not looking at how that, that, that land is filled with those leaves that have fallen. And when we look at the leaves that have fallen, we're thinking about, oh my, I remember that I did do this sin and I did do that sin. No, we are not focusing on that. That's not where we should be looking. All those things are being blurred out because we need to focus. 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 Yes, my friends. Like Isaiah, when we have a vision of God and when we get closer to his glory, we will experience an urgency and our movement will be more rapidly. The secret is in living more closely to his presence and renew our vision about him. Because sometimes, sometimes it is that we're thinking about God as somebody who him just vexed with me or we're thinking about God as somebody who I can't reach up to his standards but God is calling us to him God is calling and a matter of fact let's just go back to verse one where it says in the day that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord it could be that there's an Uzziah in our life who is blocking us from seeing 
who God is to us and we need that Uzziah to be removed. No, I'm not telling you to go and kill anybody or pray anybody dies. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is sometimes we have scales over our eyes that is not allowing us to see where God wants to bring us. When you renew your vision of God, your thoughts will change. Your feelings will change. And above all, your behavior will change. What occurred to Isaiah happened to young Charles. For a long time, Charles had been a nominal member of the church. He had been a nominal member of the church. And he just attended for mere compromise, just as he relates. Even so, he felt helpless, comfortless. One day, under a big snowstorm, he attended a service in a certain church, but the preacher could not come due to the climate. So with no preacher, a shoemaker stood up to preach. Yes, a shoemaker stood up to preach. He read the text, Isaiah 45, verse 22. And it said, turn to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. The shoemaker who had no pastoral degree, no elder certification, no lay preacher certification, nothing from the IAD, um, IAD to say that they are a certified child preacher. He repeated the passage, turn to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. And then he said, look, it isn't necessary to lift a foot nor a finger. It isn't necessary that you study in college or contribute money to know how to seek. Look at me, says the Lord, and not yourselves. There is no consolation in you. Wow. Then with his eyes set on Charles, remember Charles is in the congregation, he told him, Charles, it looks like you are sad. You will be unhappy if you don't obey. Then he shouted with more force, look to Jesus. That day, Charles said that he decided to look to Jesus, look at Jesus and his life completely changed. Who did he become afterwards? You youngins wouldn't know this. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I had to do the research to find out who Charles was because I've never heard this name before. Charles became a preacher known in history as Charles Spurgeon, a great preacher in the 1980s, 1990s. Run. 1800s, I believe 1900s. Now, when Isaiah renewed his vision of God, his life changed completely. When you renew your vision of God, your thoughts will change, your feelings will change, and your behavior will change. I can't repeat it enough. When it is that we renew our vision of God, our thoughts, what we think, that will change. How we feel, I don't feel like to go to church today. I don't feel like reading my quarterly. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like doing devotions. Our feelings will change. Our behaviors will change. We'll no longer become no longer just be a nominal member in church, but a servant of God that will be willing to say, here am I, send me. 
today, I invite you to renew your vision of God. I guarantee that the day you do it, just like Isaiah, you will say, Lord, I will go. And probably it is that it's not how we see God, but it's how we see ourselves to God. And probably it is that today we need a renewing of our mind, our spirit. But the thing about it is, as we focus on God, we focus less on ourselves. And that is the crux of the matter. As we focus on God, we focus less. Self, gone. Once we are focusing on God. I'm going to play a song and we're going to listen to it. And then I will make my appeal. first and last resort be the river always running through my deepest parts keep me in your arms cause even when I drift I want to love you better than this so renew me remake me undo me Unbreak me, come into the empty spaces of my broken places and consume me, complete me, pursue me, redeem me. Let your Holy Spirit live in through me. Pursue me, redeem me, let 
That is our prayer today, that the Lord will renew us, give us a renewed vision, help us to block out all those things that is keeping us away from the real deal, keeping us away from the real matter here. And the devil is so good at that. He's so good at placing all these distractions in our eyes. He's so good at helping us not to focus on what really matters. But how are we gonna go? How are we gonna be able to do what the Lord has commanded us? If it is that we are focused on so many other different things. Today, won't you join with me as we pray for renewed vision? Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful that you have called us. We are happy that before we were even in our mother's wombs, you knew us. Lord, there are so many distractions. There are so many things that are out there to break our concentration. But Father, today we place all these things in your hands and ask you to let those things go strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Father, this morning, I pray for each person who is here today. I pray for all 61 persons who are behind devices. And Lord, the, these are just devices. There are, there are probably more than 61 people watching even at this moment. I pray for all the persons watching on YouTube. I pray for all the persons who are watching this on the replay, may not be watching the live stream, but they saw this video come up in their suggestions and they clicked on it and they wanted a word from you. Father, help us that as we set the foundation for you to work your will in us, dear Father, that we may not push up ourselves and block you from doing your work because you're not going to do that work in us if we have not turned over our will to you. So help us to turn over that will to you this morning, Lord. And at the end of it, may we say like Isaiah, yes, my sin is great. But we know that there is your depth of forgiveness that you have given to us. And at the end of the day, we will respond with courage. Courage and boldness to go and do the will of the Lord. So, Father, here we are. Send us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Amen.